Hey everyone, welcome to the Sunday night uh, Student Loan Justice live stream. Um, if I can see your comments, I will gladly throw them out. Um, it is Sunday, August 8th, August 8th 2021. I uh, hope everybody out there is doing well. Um, again, as I said, if I can see your comments, I will gladly respond to them. A lot going on right now, guys. Um, number one... I'm going to try and keep it short tonight. Um, number one, we now have a bankruptcy bill, a good bankruptcy bill. Uh, Senator Dick Durbin, two bankruptcy bills, actually. Senator Dick Durbin and Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn have jointly introduced S-2598. Um, this bill would return bankruptcy protections to federal student loans, not private loans, federal student loans, with a 10-year uh, waiting period, not a repayment period, a waiting period. That's huge, guys. In the 16 years we've been doing this, it's never happened before. So this bill has the juice, right? I mean, the Senate is a 50-50 tie right now, I think, or something. But um, we already have one Republican sponsoring this legislation. So really, um, Senator Durbin, who is sits atop the Judiciary Committee, it's his bill, he has the votes now to get it out of committee and up for a vote on the Senate floor where it should pass. That's huge. We didn't have that last time, last session. Um, that's a very big deal. We also have a, another bankruptcy bill from Steve Cohen of Tennessee that would return bankruptcy protections to private student loans. And I'll talk about that a little so it's, it's at a later date. Right now, the most important thing um, is... Well, they're both important, but this Senate bill is historic, guys. It's a game changer. We've been banging our head against the wall for 16 freaking years now to get bankruptcy returned. So it's a huge deal. Um, a point I need to make right now is, guys, we're fighting for two things. We're fighting for the cancellation of all federally owned student loans. Um, that's a no-brainer at this point. The lending system has catastrophically failed. The loans really have got to be canceled. We're looking at an 80% default rate even before this pandemic on federal loans. I don't care who you are. I don't care what other statistics you may want to point to, which I'll be talking about in a minute. Um, that's a failed lending system, guys. That's a default rate four times higher than the subprime home mortgage default rate. So, guys, it's time to say goodbye to these loans. But we're also fighting for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy still is extraordinarily important. And in fact, the way the political dynamics work, I don't think we will get meaningful loan cancellation unless we get bankruptcy protections returned first. I'm doing this for 16 years, guys. What we have seen in the past is all kinds of loan cancellation gimmicks trotted out by... Um, like George W. Bush, even, in 2007, and then Barack Obama again in 2012. We've seen all these loan cancellation pr programs come and go. In fact, going back to 1990, like three, actually. Nobody is getting their loans canceled through these loan cancellation gimmicks, guys. Nobody. No one. Only with the presence of the threat of bankruptcy can we expect to get meaningful loan cancellation. So we're fighting for two things, bankruptcy and student loan cancellation. The two are not at odds with each other. Listen to me. Bankruptcy and loan cancellation are not pitted against each other. It's not one or the other. In fact, it's pretty much have to have the one, bankruptcy, in order to get the other, which is an actual loan cancellation that actually happens. So... Um, we're thrilled that we now have a very solid bankruptcy bill to push and push very hard. And regardless of whatever your personal thoughts are about filing for bankruptcy, it doesn't matter. we got to have the threat of bankruptcy back on our side. So this bill, S-2598, is just so important. So, um, so tonight, I want to talk a little bit about who benefits from student loan cancellation. We're seeing our opposition, well-funded opposition, who live in the swamp, they are the swamp, 
They're bending over backwards to kill the push for loan cancellation by executive order. Um, so what they're currently arguing is that, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but something to the effect that the highest 20% of earnings, uh, borrowers in terms of earnings, own like 40% of the debt. So they're using that to say, oh, canceling student loans is going to benefit people who don't need it. It's only going to benefit high income borrow, um, earners who don't need or deserve the loan cancellation. Well, guys, that's rubbish. It's garbage. And I will tell you why. The fact of the matter is, and this is very clear, and we've published a very recent research finding about this. Um, the highest balance student loan borrowers, they're not the 30-year-old doctor that, or the 30-year-old whoever who borrowed uh, $150,000 to get some degree and now he's making a hundred and fifty grand a year and everything's fine. Um, that's not who the highest balance borrowers are. The highest loan balance borrowers are people over the age of 35 and over the age of 50. I gotta kill that. Hold on a minute. Okay. Um, it's a very important thing, guys. People over the age of 35, on average, owe like $42,000 in student loan debt. People under the age of 25 owe, on average, like 15000 bucks. So people over the age of 35 owe something like... Th um, $42,000, as I said, under the age of 35, so that's an even split, under 35, over 35, over 35, 42,000, under 35, like 25,000. So clearly, and people over 50, again, is like $42,000 on average. The highest balance borrowers are old, uh, uh, older borrowers, Particularly people over 50, people over 50, $42,000, they owe triple what the youngest group owes, the under 25 crowd. They owe triple despite having borrowed far, far, far less than that younger group, right? I mean, any anyone over the age of 50 who owes triple uh, what the youngest group owes, they've had student loans for decades. And when they went to college, they didn't borrow you know, $40,000, they borrowed on average less than a third of that, probably, depending on what their deal is. But um, generally speaking, people over 50 did not borrow a lot of money for college on average. So, you know, older people, they just earn more than younger people. They do. Time comes and goes, a year comes and goes, you earn a little more every year. You know how that goes. So the highest balanced borrowers are older borrowers, and yes, they earn more, but these people have been hurt far, far worse than everybody else in the country on these student loans. I mean, if you're over 50, you've had student loans for like 25 years, and you weren't able to pay them back, so you've been hurt by these loans, odds are. So this nonsense that we're seeing in the media about the highest balance borrowers owning 40% of the debt... Yeah, they are reaching. They are trying very, very hard to try and um, uh, um, falsely describe this problem uh, in a way that makes people think, oh, yeah, why should my taxpayer money go to bail out this kid who borrowed a ton of money and is making a ton of money? No, I'm not doing it. That's what they're trying to do. And I'm telling you guys, it's completely garbage. It is absolute garbage. And here is the killing statistic that should shut just about everybody up. Before this pandemic, four out of five, 80% of all borrowers were never going to be able to repay their loans. They were either unable to pay at all, and that's like literally half of all borrowers, 50%, or they were paying and paying and paying, and that's like 30%. But their loan balances were going up, not down, up. So 80% of everybody was never going to be able to repay their loans. We were looking at a default rate before this pandemic of like, I don't know, 75%, 80%. So, you know, the default rate for subprime home mortgages by um, comparison is only 20%. 
So we are like four times higher the default rate of subprime home mortgages now today. That is a catastrophically failed lending system. And you can slice and dice all kinds of data any way you want. But there is no getting around what I just said. So um, so these people saying, oh, yeah, the canceling student loan is only going to be benefit the wealthy. That's complete bullshit. Pardon my French. Uh, and remember also, guys, 100% um, of everybody who gets a federal student loan, they're determined to be financially needy as a precondition for getting the loans. So these loans are not going to, if you make, you know, if you make, if you earn, if your family own, earns over a certain amount of money, blah, 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 you don't even qualify for federal student aid. You just don't, you have to pay. So this nonsense um, being seated in the media about our opposition, uh, by our, our, our opposition about student loan cancellation benefiting people who don't need it, that's bullshit. Now, are there going to be people, when loans are canceled, are there going to be people who didn't need the cancellation? Yes, of course. Of course there will be. There, were there people who got PPP loans, small business owners who got PPP loans, which don't need to be repaid, and which all add to the national debt, by the way. You can cancel federal student loans without adding one penny to the national debt. Were there a few people, uh, small business owners that got these PPP loans that didn't need them? You bet your ass they were. In fact, every, nearly everybody I know who got a PPP loan did not need the loan. I'm sorry, but they did. I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but uh, yeah, of, of course, some people are going to benefit who don't deserve to. But you know, that is a small price to pay. If there's a couple million people who don't need loan cancellation, that's a small price to pay in order to lift this cancerous dangerous, nationally threatening, unconstitutional, and now catastrophically failed lending system off the back of the country. That a million people benefit? Okay, well, you know, um, 43,000 millionaires and billionaires just got a pandemic stimulus of $1.6 million each. Did they deserve that? No, they didn't, obviously. So this is not about fair, unfair. This is about getting rid of a nationally threatening, unconstitutional, massively predatory, college enriching, some would say socialistic, although we're not going there, um, lending scam. That's what this is about, guys. We got to take this lending program to the bath and drown it in the tub. Now, if a million people who don't need it are going to benefit, fine, good for them. Another 44 million people, uh, certainly 40 million of whom were probably never going to ever be able to repay their loans in the first place. Yeah, they don't deserve to be wrecked for the rest of their life because somebody out there is worried about a couple million people getting a uh, loan cancellation that they don't deserve. That's bullshit. You know, should we not have uh, freed the slaves because it'd be unfair to the people who spent their lives in bondage? No, of course we should have freed the slaves. I mean, give me a break. So, anyways, I'm gonna see if I can find your comments here. Sometimes I can't even find my live streams. So, oh, okay, but we are definitely live streaming. I just, I can't see it. Uh, let's do a refresh. Um, so yeah, folks, uh, we got this. We're fighting for bankruptcy. We're fighting for student loan cancellation. Truly, they both have to happen. In my 16-year, pretty well-studied view, I would say that there's no better way to stimulate the economy right now, no easier way, and no cheaper way than to be done with this federal student loan program. And make no mistake, Bankruptcy protections have got to be returned to all student loans. So we're pushing both of those bills, the Durbin bill and the Cohen bill. Um, and quite frankly, if you want to get your loans canceled, probably the best thing for you to be doing right now is fighting for bankruptcy protections. Because the only way, as I said at the top, the only way we're going to get actual loan cancellation 
is when we get actual bankruptcy protections, which will light a fire under the ass uh, of the swamp, who up to this point um, have been feasting on our misery. And, you know, up to this point, everything has worked in favor of the swamp. They've fought tooth and nail. Number one thing the swamp has done over the 16 years that we've been around is fight against the return of bankruptcy protections to the loans. And I could go on for quite some time on that particular point. Uh, but just uh, suffice it to say, believe you me, um, yeah, we've got to get bankruptcy protections back, guys. We just absolutely have got to get those bankruptcy protections returned. So I said I was going to keep it short tonight, and I think I will live by that. I don't see the live stream. I'm sure I missed your comments, and I apologize for that. Facebook. Um, but anyways, I hope you are all. I hope you all are very thrilled, pleased, enthused. But more than that, I hope you all are getting ready to go to battle. This is like the final battle. This is the end of the line. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel for the first time ever. We've got to fight. This thing is not going to go quietly. Trust me on that. If we've learned nothing else over the years is that every inch that we gain in ground, we've got to fight for. We have a very well-resourced, uh, not huge in number, but a, a bunch of very clever, smart, dedicated, ambitious, enthusiastic, committed people to keeping this lending system alive and wrecking the country, and they will not go down without a fight. So if you've been sitting on the sidelines, waiting, watching, worrying, hoping, uh, and praying, praying is great, guys. Um, hoping and praying is great, but you got to help. you got to put your back into this fight. Nothing will, good will happen. Washington, D.C. is not going to magically solve this problem and throw a golden thing into our laps. It's just, it just doesn't work that way. It never has, never will. So we're going to need your help, guys. Up and down on this group, you will see daily actions that we need everyone, everyone, including you sitting there, to help with. These are your loans. This is your problem. I don't know what people are doing out there. On any given day, probably 90 plus percent of the people on our group aren't doing anything. I don't know what you guys are doing. But these are your loans. This is your problem. I don't want to be sitting here even a year from now. I want these loans gone. I got my own loans. Um... You know, we're a completely not, no money organized. We survive on literal, like chicken chain, nothing, do, just donation, personal gifts from normal people. I'm not in this to make any money. Nobody, every, this is a 100% volunteer group. We don't have any ulterior motives. We don't have any deals, backroom deals with bad guys. None of that stuff. I'm a, I'm a student loan borrower. Every, all of our state chapter leaders, I think, are student loan borrowers. We're in this to win it, and only for only for that. So we're no different from you, and you can't sit there and eat popcorn and think that we're going to pull your weight for you. It ain't going to happen. You got to pull your own weight, and you've got to help. So every day, guys, we put these daily actions up on our Facebook group. You can check back at the website. We do daily updates there. Um, but this group is probably the best place for you to be. Do those daily actions. It's not like, okay, spend three hours doing this. No. Our daily actions are usually like, retweet this. It, they take like 15 seconds at most. So, you know, we've got a million people on our petition now. We've got 50, well, a million, 50,000. We've got like 50,000 people on our Facebook group and all our other um, social media platforms. Um, we've got a huge number of people. We've got a little army going here. We should have more. We could have more. Um, that's only going to happen when you get off your ass and help. Because we are the pioneers, like it or don't. We're the pioneers in this. And honestly, I don't see this problem getting solved unless we, this group, believe it or not, actually put our pedal to the metal and make this thing happen. So if you've been lazy over the past months or years or how long you've been on this group, um, I'm asking you, um, turn over a new leaf, take this problem seriously. Cause this is it guys. This is, this is kind of do or die, sink or swim. Um, so, all right, with that, I'm going to wish you all a fine, fine Sunday evening. Uh, and again, if I can see.
Oh, I can see my live video. If I have any questions here, um, I will quickly respond to them. Diamond J says, thank you. Um, you know what, guys? I think I've gone on long enough tonight. I'm going to leave it at that. I will answer your questions offline. And um, let's make this next week count. Like us on Twitter, Student Loan Just, number one, Student Loan Just, number one. Um, do everything you can to spread the word about our petition. More than anything, just do all those daily actions. Look up, look down, you'll see them. All right, guys, we'll have a great night. Let's, have, let's make this week an historic one for Student Loan Justice. Um, let's get this loan system gone. Let's get bankruptcy returned, and let's get the loans canceled in the rearview mirror. And remember, key point here, Senate Republicans. We got to hit Republicans in the Senate. Also, Republican governors in most of the southern states. So just look up and down on the group and you can figure it out. We all we have very smart, capable, gifted people on this group who can think and act for themselves. So make it happen. Let us know what you get accomplished. We're happy to brag on you about that uh, when you're actually getting stuff done and moving the needle in our direction. But I'm really looking forward to the next couple months, guys. Um, I hope you are too. So good luck. Godspeed. I'll be back tomorrow. Ed will be back on Tuesday. Let's do this. God bless everybody.